Hello everyone, this is Omni Talk Retail. I'm Chris Walton. And I'm Ann Mazinga. And we are coming to you once again from the Fusion Group's booth at Grocery Shop, booth A210. Got I got that right, right? A210. A210. A That's yes. a good way to say it, Ann. Yes. And it is with great pleasure that I introduce the man standing between us, Ann. Yes. And that is Mr. Franz Miller. Miller, the president and CEO of Ajo Delays. Franz, welcome to Omni Talk. It's great to have you here. Yeah, it's unbelievable nice to be here at A210, and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to be a part of it today. Well, Franz, please share with our audience who may not be familiar about Ajo del Hayes a little bit about the, the business and kind of where you are, what countries you're in, that kind of thing. Yeah, Ajo del Hayes is a little bit difficult na name to pronounce to start with. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of uh, folks in the U.S. don't know that name as a, as a retailer name. But we operate five brands in the U.S. 60% yep. of our total business is here, so that's oh. about uh, 16 billion dollars okay. here on the East Coast. But we operate uh, from the north in Maine to the Carolinas, and the rest of the business is in uh, in Europe and Indonesia. So um, we are a little bit mix of U.S. and Europe retailer. We operate uh, supermarkets. We have 98% uh, of our sales is in food. We also operate a very nice uh, platform in um, a marketplace in the Benelux countries, oh. which is very successful, a market leader there. It's called oh. Bol, B-O-L. Yep. Okay. So if you're a readership or your listenership, yeah. you like to Google that. It's a pretty cool company yeah. also. Mm. Uh, and um, that's our company. We have number one and two positions along the whole East Coast. And uh, we have in total 16 brands in our company. So a little bit different than a few competitors with one brand on the facade. Right. We believe in local, we believe in close to the communities, and most of our brands are more than decades young. Uh, and the oldest one is 155 years old. And how long have you been in this role? In this role, it's about eight years now. Okay, yep. and you see, o you oversee all of that? I'm supposed to, that's my <laughs> job. <laughs> that, that that's my job description, at least. <laughs> right, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's I mean, <laughs> you just listed off for a few minutes all of the properties that you oversee. It's quite yeah. a job responsibility. I yes, it is. Uh, yeah, so but I, we also have uh, 400,000 team members who... 400,000, wow. Who, who are helping and who are supporting and who do uh, a uh, terrific job for us. And yeah. what are some of those banners in the States, too? What are they called? Yeah, so in the north, uh, we have Hannaford. Hannaford, yep. Maine, Vermont, Mass. Then we have uh, Stop and Chop mm -hmm. in uh, Massachusetts, New England, and New York. Mm -hmm. Then we have The Giant Company in Pennsylvania. Then we have The Giant Food Company in Washington, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And we have Food Lion in the right. Carolinas, but there are in total 10 states in the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, all brands have number one or two positions in their DMAs, uh, their, their market areas. And uh, yeah, we have um, pretty good business overall. Yeah, right. Um, okay, so you, you came a long way to speak on stage today. I'm curious, what did you talk about? Um, I got some uh, very good questions from Melissa Repko from mm -hmm. CNBC, and she wanted to know a little bit more about the company, so a little bit the question you asked me uh, to Oh, I end. steal all my questions from Melissa Repko. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. There's no plagiat here, I, I don't believe <laughs> that. So, um, no, so we talked a little bit about who we are. We talked a little bit about our, uh, about our four years strategy growing together. We talked about a few elements on how do we like to grow, mm -hmm. what, uh, how did consumers change in the last couple of years, and what do you think uh, going forward? Of course, we talked at the grocery shop about uh, e-commerce, e digital, e media, yeah. and these kind of things, as you can imagine. Yes, huh? yes. Yeah, as you can imagine. And um, we talked also a little bit more about uh, private label, mm -hmm. which is, of course, uh, an important driver for growth and differentiation. Well, I heard, I heard from a few people who heard your session mm. that one of the key things that you were focused on in that conversation was talking about retail media. But um, of all the things you just mentioned, retail media, um, e-com growth, digitization of the stores, is there one thing that kind of takes priority in your mind over the other, all of those initiatives? Like is something, does something rise to the top? The one thing which is, of course, rising to the top is um, how can we, as an omni-channel company mm -hmm. in bricks and mortar and online, can bring the best customer value proposition to the table, and how can we excite and satisfy our customer base? We have roughly uh, 63 million customers a week, mm. so it's a few folks to that's, that's to make lot. happy. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot, uh, and I think that is the, the top of mind. And all the other elements are more or less support factors to make that happen. 
Okay, so it's focus on the customer. And of those, is there a technology or a, an area of investment that you feel like is most important right now for retailers? No, the most, the most foundation, foundational for us is uh, proper and clean data. Okay. Okay, so to interesting. Make, to make sure that you have uh, the right data, so you have fact-based, which is okay. 80% of our customers will buy through loyalty systems yep. in 2028. That is now roughly 65%. Mm. Yeah. So we are rich in, in, in data, in knowledge, in insights, I must say. Um, and that's we can use to make your expectation and even more satisfied by giving you um, a better product or a better customer experience or a more seamless journey or an experience where you can combine a to-go store with uh, retail online mm -hmm. with the, the full shop and that is um, what we try to do and we are already a long time in omni-channel yeah. uh, I mean you, you heard the stories and years ago the people said there will be no stores anymore yes. right yeah, you, you, you might no, have heard yeah. about it yeah, we heard well. that, yeah. Uh, and um, we always said no no uh, online will grow mm -hmm. and will grow with a faster pace than gr bricks and mortar which it did but stores will be super important and omni-channel is for us the name of the game. Yeah, well and the omni-channel is really not anything new too. I mean, we've been doing omni-channel things as grocers for a long time. We've had pe places where you could drive up and get your groceries put in your car and that kind of thing too. But I want to single you out for a second because Andy, for us might be a needle in a stack of needles because he's a retail CEO that just said he's focused on data. Yes. Which is something that we've never heard in our history well, of doing to be this fair, show. He said the customer first and then he said data. So yeah. you you checked the right boxes in the right order. Yeah. But yes, yes, data but is But that has huge. never been said by a retail CEO on our history of our show. So kudos to you because mm, we're always no, talking about uh, kudos a needle uh, sounds quite sharp by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, no, but, uh, yeah. but uh, I think I think Good data. Sharp is the right word, though. Good data. To yeah. yeah, it's the right word. Yeah. Good data to understand you better. Good data to build a category. Good right. data to do the forecasting and mm -hmm. total supply chain. And we talked a little bit of the AI and Gen AI at, mm -hmm. the, at, yeah. the, at the fair here as well, the sh at, the, at the grocery shop as well. And I think uh, good data combined with the right tooling and technology can do a lot of things good. And to save money, better efficiencies, to save food waste, and all mm -hmm. these kind of things. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite s excited about that's data. Great. That's great to hear that that's a priority for you. Yeah. you. I yeah, love that. We love that. We love yeah. hearing that. So I, I want to ask you on, on, on a similar thread. So retail media, mm -hmm. you know, it's been the talk of the town now for a few years. How do you, in your role as CEO, define retail media? And how do you think, is it more than advertising? Like, how do you think about that whole concept? Retail media in itself, um, I would say... Um, is more providing uh, better insights which you make available to the partners in your supply chain. Okay. So um, if we have more knowledge about categories or cross-selling or upselling or conversions and we make uh, that available in a proper way, then these kind of things are worth something mm -hmm. because you can make a big benefit with this. Right. And that's why uh, retail media is an opportunity. Starts, by the way, with data, data. Yes. Yeah, absolutely yes. start with data and um, if we do this in the right way and we have still uh, quite some work to do mm -hmm. um, we have a target out there for complementary revenues how we call that with uh, shopping data retail media data and loyalty data mm -hmm. um, the three billion complementary revenue to reinvest in our business um, but that that starts with data and it's all about insights how can we know you better mm -hmm. yeah. how can we say to our cpg partners those customers make that cross sell those partners have this type of profile this is how we can grow the category this is how we can grow the basket but in the end we would like to go further we would like to grow you as a customer yeah right. um, and we see that omni-channel customers well treated mm -hmm. uh, and well taken care of can be one and a half to three times bigger than only online or only bricks right. and mortar. That's the number and we that keep hearing. And that's, of course, and the size of the price to fight for. Yeah. So so I want to capture what you said, though. So the way I interpret what you said is you kind of look at retail media as a way for one plus one to equal three with all the constituents that you mm. work with, particularly the CPGs. Like, if you guys invest in it mutually, it'll just grow to the benefit. It'll help both parties grow 
uh, going forward into the future. Is that is that the right way to sum it up, or what am I missing there? Uh, one on one is three n. Uh, I don't know how, how you calculate it, but <laughs> I think that's a little. Oh, bit that's called U.S. <laughs> math. Uh, ah, that's yeah, yeah. It's a little bit creative calculation <laughs> here, but yes, uh, he he went to Stanford. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no, don't no, worry. no, no, no. Yeah, um, it must be right then. So <laughs> highest educated person. Stanford is, yes. Stanford is a pretty good yes. school. So um, no, I think um, what is important here for us is that um, that we make those insights available in a way which is efficient also for our partners in advertising, the yeah. CPG guys, mm -hmm. um, which is giving the proper insights, but also based on our market positions in the markets where we operate. Right, what you uniquely offer. For the moment where we, right. where we talk about the US with number one and two positions, close to the community, very trusted brands, that also they enjoy the conversion. Yeah. Because in the end, they also say, okay, I invest this in media and advertising, what do I get back for this? And, and conversion, has to do with return on on the investment. So mm -hmm. the ROAs must, in the end, be the driver for this. And we make this available. We have cockpits and these kind of things where they can see the, the ROAs and right. the conversions. So this is what we still have some opportunity for. How does um, loyalty, like you mentioned that your loyalty members by 2028, is gonna, they're going to be how 80% 80, 80 um, of your customers will be loyalty members by then. How does that play into your kind of measurement or ROI when it comes to retail media investment too because I feel like you're getting to know the person better you're giving me better offers you're kind of creating a flywheel then um, how do you think about investment in retail media and the increase in loyalty members as a as another uh, result loyalty is the word almost says you have to earn yeah mm -hmm. and I only get your loyalty or your willingness to buy through a loyalty card so that you will get more insights if we do something for you as well yeah this is a great retailer yeah so that is uh, things like i think there the personalized uh, comment comes in yeah uh, if we understand you and we give you offers or prices or whatsoever hey this is really what i want yeah this is spot on or we make your journey your uh, shop shopping journey more seamless or when you say, well, what's for dinner tonight? And I don't know this, and we give you some ideas mm -hmm. on the spot or based on what is in your fridge. Yeah. Or based the recipes you like and these kind of things. If we have these kind of things uh, and we do this across all the channels to go online, the big store, um, I think those things make us then for you a good partner. Yeah. And, uh, and then you think, well, then I'm prepared yeah. to enter your loyalty scheme I'm prepared to take my uh, my own uh, loyalty rebates based on, on my own buying behaviors, and then you get customers who who start to love us. Yeah, well, yeah, they have a reason. You're saving yeah. them money mm -hmm. and time. And yeah. Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, I have another question for you. Yeah. So you've been in this role for almost eight years. You said six. Yeah. So no. Um, in 2016, we had our merger. Yeah. And in 2018, I took this role. So okay. You're 100% correct, six years. Six years, okay. In 2013, I started as, uh, as a CEO of Deleuze. Okay. Deleuze merged with Ahold, Ahold okay. Deleuze. Okay. Yeah, that's how it all came. Yeah. So uh, in this type of roles, uh, a good 10, 11 years. So. Okay. Thank you for that correct math. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> am wondering. I'm just Rotterdam <laughs> University. It's not, I'm not as, <laughs> as, smart, I mean as <laughs> smart as Chris is. <laughs> no <laughs> new math. You huh? showed yeah, right. me. Um, okay, I want to know, <laughs> what have you learned about being a retailer in those last eight years, we'll say, the eight to ten years that you didn't know before you started? Which I didn't know about retail or didn't know about myself? Uh, you could both. Both? both yes. Yeah. I think um, if you look at the last couple of years, uh, and we still have in mind uh, the pandemic. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, we still have in our, mind, in our minds the Ukrainian war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We have a crisis in Europe on commodities, energy prices. We saw a lot of people during COVID going through a lot of uh, pain and mm -hmm. problems and, and things to overcome. That makes you as a human being or as a leader of a company super humble. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. and extremely appreciative for your people, what they all did in yeah. those seven half thousand stores, distribution centers and offices. So that's one thing. The other thing is what, what I also learned for the business in itself that, of course, you know that retail is so local, but it got even more local because people uh, trust, the, the element of trust became even more important. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because you go right. to your grocer, 
who handles your product properly, who keeps you safe, who has well stocked uh, shelves, so uh, and who has a, yeah, an, a proposition which is affordable, healthy, and sustainably sourced, so that we all can feed our families. Or if we cannot feed our families, that we can su get support from them in our communities. Eh? We're one of the biggest contributors worldwide with the food banks. Eh? Mm -hmm. the, the Global Food Bank Network is, an, mm -hmm. is, a, is a network we sponsor. And in all our brands, all the 16, we are strong, yeah, a strong contributor to the food banks with pride, by the way, and right. with humility. Right. So those, those are the things yeah. uh, which are, uh, for me, important. And I think, yeah, for us, a mission for our company and what drives our people in our company, the passion of our people is how to make sure that groceries are affordable, healthy, and sustainably sourced. And that is a big opportunity. And it's not everywhere um, an affluent neighborhood. Correct. Right. And uh, and I personally believe, but that then we get a little bit philosophical. <laughs> and That's okay. I mean, we yeah. got time yeah. for this. We Let's like go philosophy. Yeah. I, I personally believe that um, people who have access to healthy and affordable foods plus have access to proper education, that then you at least set people in the opportunity right. to be successful right. or to be happy. And that's where, where I'm super fortunate to work for Aho Deleuze and that I can hopefully bring a contribution to here promote that. to make sure that that element is at least taken care of. Yeah. Well said. I love what you said about the pandemic too, because I mean, I know, Anne, and when we were, I, mean, I remember when we were in the pandemic thinking that, you know, the grocery store is just that center point in people's lives. Like yeah. it still existed in a way that I don't think any of us really understood or recognized at the time until it happened. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's get you out of here on this. Last question. Uh, you've got a lot of executives that work for you. You've got a lot of experience in the grocery industry. Um, you know, people are still trying to understand what omni-channel grocery retailing is all about. Is there one trait in an executive that you value or, th or would encourage people to um, get better at day in and day out in, as they're doing their jobs? Um, I don't know if there's one trait, but maybe three traits. Okay. Huh? Yes. Good. Okay, good. Yeah. Why, why have hey. one when uh, three yeah, is so available? Um, Raising the bar here. One thing for me is that um, leaders and colleagues I work with mm -hmm. uh, go that extra mile. Okay. That's an important element of, uh, I think, of an, uh, an attitude. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is that people have a very good view for people. Mm -hmm. If you, in retail, if you do not love people, you will not be successful. And ah, the third thing, and the third thing is, um, I would appreciate a lot of people wh where they, whatever their age is, that they stay curious. Yes, that, that curiosity yes. is yes. there yes. to Hope think about it. innovation, think what can go better. And in retail, it's a little bit um, sometimes a little bit tough. Yeah, if your year is ended by the thirty first of December, our our business year mm -hmm. ends by that date, then the first of January, the meet is on zero. You yeah. start again. Yeah. So it's also sometimes, yeah, keeps you also um, with, the, with the feet on the ground, mm -hmm. which is nice industry to work for. Yeah, yeah, right. I yeah. love that. Love that. That's great. Thanks for the three, too. That I was know. great. Especially yeah. the last one. I love the last one. Yeah. Well, uh, that wraps us up for today, the first day of Grocery Shop 2024. Thank you so much to the Vision Group for helping us bring you all of the coverage from the show, recaps from the main stage with um, all of the guests that we've had yeah. today. Um, we will uh, be how, how many how many guests did you have? Four oh, ju today. Just you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a dozen of guests. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. 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 Save guests. the best for last. Save but the no, best for but, uh, last. No, we had four today. We've got five tomorrow as yes. well. So, yes. uh, so um, you're you're the anchor leg for today, though. So you uh, close us out for today. Yes. So T thank you. Tomorrow morning we'll be back with David McIntosh from Instacart, mm. and uh, thanks again, Franz Miller from yep. Ajo Del Hayes, and thanks to all of you for following along. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then. Yep. Be careful out there.